Now, let's uh, talk to you about this uh, latest uh, from Thames Water. It's not often that Islington gets compared to Venice, but that's precisely the picture a breathless Anna, whose landlady at the Tollington Arms, painted for us here on GB News a little earlier this week. She described a tsunami of water hurtling down Hornsey Road towards her pub after a Thames water mains burst. Not any old pipe, you understand. A three feet wide main fractured, leading to 70 firefighters trying to cope with a flood that was four feet deep in places. What a mess. Then today, villagers at North End in Oxfordshire having to queue up for bottled water and use tankers as Thames Water shut off their supplies because of pumping problems at the nearby Stoken Church Reservoir. Well, to celebrate these apocalyptic failures, Thames Water has now warned its 15 million other customers a hosepipe ban is on the way. They can't say exactly when because of a number of operational and legal procedural requirements, which presumably includes trying to calm down their customers. Now, remember, this is the company that recently paid its executives five million quid in benefits, bonuses and incentives, but has also decided to mothball a £250 million taxpayer-funded desalination plant in East London that could be delivering 100 million litres of water every day. They say it's just too expensive to get back into operation. They've also sold off reservoirs. 25, we believe, since the 1980s for housing land, boosting their coffers. And they're not alone. South West Water sold off its Kilworthy Reservoir in 2015 with planning permission for housing there. Well, the rewards for all this seeming mismanagement of resources, pretty handsome. England's water and sewage firms paying their bosses a total of £48 million in 2020-21, 27 million of that in bonuses, all for allowing around 3 billion litres of water to be lost through the system every day. So, what are the politicians doing? Well, ministers may announce an official drought after they meet water officials and farming experts this coming Friday. The clue may be in the title they've hit on, the National Drought Group. Writing in last week's Sunday Telegraph, the Environment Secretary George Eustace declaring it was right that water companies were taking actions such as hosepipe bans. And he urged householders to install water-saving devices in their toilets. But he did add that the government wanted the industry to cut leaks by 16 percent, mains burst by 12 percent. Mr Eustace saying he expected water companies to step up, adapt and innovate. And if they didn't, he wouldn't hesitate to step in and take further action. Off what, rather unhelpfully observed, a quarter of water companies had already missed those targets. The industry's new target? To halve the number of leaks by 2050. Uh, by which time I may be, and many of you too, be in that great bathroom in the sky. Well, the prime ministerial candidates, meanwhile, have rather belatedly jumped in. Rishi Sunak saying he'd consider compensation if a hosepipe ban was a direct consequence of a water company's failures. Liz Truss saying she would look at how best off what could hold the water companies with the worst track records to account. But shouldn't they have been doing that all along anyway? Anyone fancy a glass of water? It'll cost you.